Hey everyone, and welcome to this episode of the lecture series. We're going to go over this equation and quite a few more because this episode is going to be all about the gravitational singularity. So we're going to get into all the math that has to do with the gravitational singularity. But first, we're going to start off explaining what a gravitational singularity is and how it relates to black holes. All right, let's go on into it. First, start out with what a singularity actually is. When you first think about it, you think of singularity comes from the word singular or to be single, such as a person who is just one person, uh, not in a couple. And so you are singular. However, you guys have might have also heard the term of the technological singularity, which essentially says is a point where technology growth becomes uncontrollable, reaching a point where it has major circumstances and impacts to human civilization with irreversible changes, such as artificial intelligence, iPhone, what, 2000? Now, thankfully, there's uh, quite a lot of safety precautions that are going into play when it comes to big tech companies, but it's still accelerating pretty quickly. Now, what about the universal singularity, which essentially says like what happened and what it was ex in existence before the Big Bang, also known as the initial singularity or just the singularity. Well, now there's some theories of what came before the Big Bang. Was there nothing? Was there suddenly everything that followed after it? One of my favorite things right now is actually what Stephen Hawking was working on right before he passed away, which is known as the no boundary proposal. Which right now it is just a hypothesis. Um, it's highly mathematical, but it's really awesome. Totally check out the video for that one. But now let's go into what exactly a gravitational singularity is, which is what we're going to be talking about in this video. Now it kind of starts out with unanswered questions, unknown questions, questions that don't really have a logical answer. For instance, if we look at a simple example of f of x equals 1 over x. Well, what if x equals 1? Then that means f of x equals 1 over 1, and that's 1. But what if x is 0? So you could f of x and 1 over 0, and their function has no solution. Now, there is an exception known as the Riemann sphere, which essentially says if you have 1 over 0, it equals infinity. Uh, but that's all kind of hypothetical and just sort of ideas. diving into a gravitational singularity, we have to first look at Einstein's field equations, which is, talks about a single spherical non-rotating mass. Now, this is the whole beautiful, crazy equation that I um, had first used on my piece of cardboard in the beginning of this video. Um, but we're going to be moving on to someone called Carl Schwarzschild. Now, Carl Schwarzschild developed a very simple kind of pretty looking equation that's a lot more digestible when it comes to calculating the gravitational singularity of a non-rotating spherical object. And this is what the equation looks like. It's Rs equals 2 times gm over c. So Rs is the Schwarzschild radius, so that's what I'll be talking to you guys about in a second. G is the gravitational constant, I'll explain that in a second. M is the mass of the object, and then c is the speed of light. Now keep in mind, the speed of light and the gravitational constant are both constants in the universe. Gravitational constant was actually calculated quite a long time ago, and it's used in a lot of astrophysics equations to be able to calculate different bodies of mass found in our universe. But going into what exactly a Schwarzschild radius is, essentially is when you have a spherical body of mass that keeps getting compressed until eventually it can't be compressed anymore. So as you see here, you have the same mass as it shrinks and gets smaller, but a different radius. So what exactly is happening here? Now what's happening is it's getting so compressed under something such as gravity where the escape velocity has to be equal to the speed of light. So escape velocity, meaning in order for the object to break out of its gravitational pull, it has to move faster than the speed of light. And as of right now, nothing in the universe moves faster than the speed of light. The speed of light is 299,792,458 meters per second. That's a huge number. And if we look at the Schwarzschild radius equation, that number is squared. That means it's 8.9 times 10 to the 16th meters squared per second squared. 
That's a huge number. So that being said, we know the Schwarzschild radius is going to be really, really tiny. Let's take an example. Let's look at Earth, our nice, beautiful planet. Earth has a mass of 5.972 times 10 to the 24th kilograms, and its radius is about 6,371 kilometers. Now, if we put that into the equation, let's do some math. We know that the gravitational constant is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th meters cubed kilograms to the minus 1 and seconds to the minus 2. Plugging that all into the equation, here's some fun math. Let's put some cute music with it. guesstimating at millimeters, it comes to about 8 millimeters in diameter. That is the Earth's Schwarzschild radius. That is tiny. That's like about the size of a penny. Now that's cool and all, but we really want to understand more about this whole gravitational singularity. Like, for instance, what if an object's radius is less than its Schwarzschild radius? Like, that's crazy to even think about because usually the Schwarzschild radius is going to be smaller than the object's radius. But just let's look at it hypothetically. If the radius of the object is less than the Schwarzschild radius, it becomes a black hole. But what exactly is happening in there? So you guys remember how like 1 over 0 doesn't make sense? This is where we have it as a singularity. It reaches a point where we don't exactly know what's going on in there. But what we do know from lots of black hole observations, as well as that beautiful image of a black hole that was taken this year, we know that objects are constantly falling into black holes because a black hole's gravity is so powerful. Anything that passes the event horizon of a black hole is doomed for an eternal death in the black hole. But what happens is you constantly have mass, bodies of mass, stars and different planets and dust and gas falling into the black hole. That's causing its core to become infinitely dense, making this a gravitational singularity. But what exactly is even happening at the singularity? Well, there's some ideas as far as like a wormhole or time travel, or even achieving warp drive or moving fast in the speed of light, which would be really cool because if we can somehow make that happen, then maybe we can achieve interstellar travel. But until the day comes where we actually can go inside of a black hole and see what exactly is going on without dying, then I guess we won't actually know. We'll just have to keep doing more observations because this can really make a huge difference one day for humanity. Just think about it. If somehow we are able to have a robotic mission go into a black hole and somehow it survives and we discover a whole new energy source or something like that, imagine the possibilities. Well, anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the lecture series. Be sure to subscribe and also leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think about gravitational singularities, what you think about a technological singularity, or just singularities in general. All right, till next time, keep learning. Bye, guys.